What you doing? Adam, the door upstairs. I was bored. Ooh, is that a golden mullet? Don't touch that. Mm, I wasn't gonna touch it. Stop it. Stand over there. Oh, great. Hey, you had a better idea? Well, I mean, you could... Run! Ah! Okay, throw me the rope. Throw me the golden mullet, and then I'll throw you the rope. You think I'm stupid? You throw me the rope, then I'll throw you the mullet. We have a show to do. We don't have time for this. I've got all day. Okay, so you're going to throw me the grains of Warbox. I'm going to throw you my mother's recipe for potatoes au gratin. You're gonna throw me Peace Walker for the PSP. I'm gonna throw you that footage I took of you playing Glee Karaoke Revolution and totally enjoying yourself. You're gonna throw me the Cthulhu plushie. I'm gonna throw you the rock gut. You're gonna throw me your Kindle. I'm gonna throw you the rope. And then you're gonna throw me the golden mullet. Deal? Deal? Fine. <sighs> we did it! Nothing can stop us now! Katamari. Why did it have to be Katamari? Run! Oh. I can't believe we made it out of there alive. Explain to me again why the X-Play Deep Storage has death traps. <gasps> Blazinski. Again, Morgan and Adam. We see there's nothing you'll possess that I cannot take away. Forgot something. What possibly could we have forgotten? I don't know. Golden Mullet Awards. Be nice. I'm Dalton. And I'm Dalton. We're coming to you from the Double Deuce in Jasper, Missouri. We have one rule on X-Play. Be nice until it's time to not be nice. Today, we're through being nice, so we're going to be extra not nice. We're going to bust some heads and knock the teeth out of the games that gave us the most trouble in 2010. That's because they're the worst of the worst. The games that don't know how to have a good time and end up ruining everyone's night. We've got awards for six very special games, including Outstanding Achievement in Franchise Betrayal and Best Example of Why We Mock Koei. And of course, it wouldn't be a Golden Mullet show without an incredibly horrible movie game. This year's pick is exceptionally bad. But first, it's time to feel awkward and gross. Let's kick things off with a bad game on a handheld that's on its last legs. Of course, I'm talking about Dead or Alive Paradise for the PSP. This isn't a fighting game. We might actually enjoy that. Paradise is a beach game where you hang out with ladies whose breasts defy the laws of gravity. It gets the award for outstanding achievement and making my pants confused. It's been a long year so far, and you could probably use a vacation. Why not visit the lush tropical Zack Island in Dead or Alive Paradise for the PSP? I'll tell you why not. It's awful. Not the you know what? As usual, DOA Paradise has the girls of the inexplicably titled fighting game series lounging about on an island and playing volleyball. You pick your favorite DOA lady and proceed to hit the beaches and crawl around in a really off-putting manner with nobody else around. I could fall asleep right here. Ostensibly, you're supposed to make friends with the other girls so you can team up for more volleyball. But the only way to do this is to buy them stuff. The best way to make friends is with gifts. That's right. There's no talking, no spending time together, no actual interaction that might lead to bonding between actual humans. Just the purchasing a favor via material goods. This is just what I wanted. Very positive message. Let's meet again later. The ultimate goal seems to be to persuade the various girls to let you take pictures of them in what may be the creepiest mini game ever devised. They pose and hang around in a manner that suggests they may not quite know you're there, and you snap photos of them for what can only be sinister blackmail schemes. The volleyball is decent enough, and poker and blackjack are no worse or better than what's on your cell phone. You got blackjack! 
As such, my question is, what's the point? The much vaunted boob jiggle doesn't even look remotely convincing. That's the movement of a balloon nailed to a stick, not a human breast. This is starting to get annoying. DOA Paradise is a functional volleyball game and swimsuit collection tool buried in shallow, ultra-consumerism and off-putting voyeurism. Why do we need a portable version of this anyway? The weirdos masturbating on the bus to work don't seem to need any help. A one. I can't believe it! Out of five. If you thought the new Clash of the Titans movie was a terrible blight on cinema, you might be surprised to discover that the video game version is somehow worse. It's time to release the Crappin' and our award for worst movie game. <coughs> oh, God. Uh... It's almost always a terrible sign when a video game adaptation of a popular film is released months after the movie leaves theaters. And Clash of the Titans the video game is no exception. After some delays, this title is exiting the development process the same way the remnants of a partially digested Costco hot dog evacuate the colon of Aretha Franklin. Something feels very wrong here. You play as Perseus, a half-man, half-god, who must defeat Hades so that the world isn't destroyed by the Kraken, a hideous beast of gigantic proportions who devours everything in its path, like Carney Wilson at a Sizzler. As you can imagine, the character models are at best passable. The Sam Worthington one is all right, but your mom in the game looks like a constipated zombie. There are no boats on the water. But we haven't even gotten to the real reason this game sucks. It's a mind-numbing collection of fetch quests that have you venturing into the same boring zones repeatedly to fight through endless waves of respawning enemies, over and over and over. Here's an example of a quote-unquote quest in Clash of the Titans. This chubby guy here tells you to fish for him because he's hungry. I'll eat anything as long as it's not poisonous. Anything. So you think there must be a fishing mini game like in Zelda, right? But no. Here you have to fight your way through a bunch of skeleton monsters until you come across a glowing dot on the ground that tells you you've acquired fish. The game allows you to play cooperatively with a friend during certain sections, which is great unless you expect to be able to understand what's happening. It's like the digital equivalent of having David Spade for a co-star. Here's a real shocker. Clash of the Titans the video game is a one. Please, don't do anything stupid. Out of five. Stick around. We've got more golden mullets on the way, including the MMO that crashed and burned like it was the VGA. <laughs> Uh, plus a spectacularly bad button masher from Koei and the game that got us the most hate mail. We will be right back. Fist of the North Star Kin's Rage is a faithful retelling of the popular manga from the 1980s. And that's about as nice of a thing as I can actually say about it. That is not going to end well. Here's this year's best example of why we mock Koei. I can't feel my legs anymore, but it's better that way. <laughs> Alrighty, review time. Let's see what we have today. Hopefully something fun because... Oh no. Please tell me it's not another Dynasty Warriors game. For the love of all things holy, tell me it's not another Dynasty Warriors game. Oh, thank you. I thought I'd never have to review another game like that. It'll take more than that to stop me now. Son of a... Why, Koei, why? If you played any Dynasty Warriors game, you've already played this before. This game is about as generic and as repetitive as you can get. Sure, it has two modes and plenty of levels, but none of these things will ever overshadow the fact that the game is still completely and utterly terrible. So, what's the big deal? Let us count the waves. In 1999, a presentation like this would be almost passable on last generation consoles. Well, time traveler, it's 2010 now, and graphics like this just aren't going to cut it anymore. Secondly, the environments are about as varied and as exciting as the dirt you walk on. 
We get it, it's a post-apocalyptic world, but a little more detail and variety at each level wouldn't have hurt you. As for the combat, well, we don't need to tell you how repetitive it is. So rather than spending another breath talking about it, why not just show it to you? Yep, you get the point. About the only thing going for this game is how it does a decent job of summarizing the entire timeline of the anime series. You follow Ken's timeline in Legend Mode and experience the side character storylines in Dream Mode. So if you're a hardcore fan of the anime and partially brain dead, this might actually entertain you. Other than that, it's still just another horrible Dynasty Warriors clone with nothing significant of value forever to offer you suck. A one out of five. Real Time Worlds Cops and Robbers MMO APB was in development for years, hyped as the game that would bring console shooter fans into the world of monthly subscription fees. Soon after the launch, the game was shut down, the studio imploded, and all that's left is the golden mullet for outstanding achievement in total failure. We need people willing to fight fire with fire. Developed by the creators of Crackdown, APB promised an action-packed modern world which pitted vigilantes against criminals. Customize your character to the criminal or enforcer of your dreams and know that you, the players, were the content. Don't kick me in the book! Ah! Unfortunately, these selling points aren't enough to maintain interest for long as the lack of refined gameplay prevents APB from delivering its potential. All you've done is create legalized vigilantism! With APB's customization tools, you can modify every little detail of your character's physical appearance. This includes body type, facial features, clothes, and even tattoos. The same level of deep customization also applies to your car. Essentially, how unique your character and his ride appears depends solely on the limits of your imagination, which we have to admit is pretty incredible. Guess it's part of the fun though, right? As impressive as these customization tools are, mediocrity eventually settles in as soon as you set foot in San Paro. A city by definition is bustling with activity. San Paro is not only a city, but a city supposedly ripe with crime and chaos. So here it is, San Paro. Yep, you can just feel the tension. And nothing's happening. It's this lack of interactivity and action between mission points that really removes any sense of excitement and tension from the game. There are no NPCs outside of the contacts you talk to. Secondly, most of the action congregates around mission points, which is sparse to say the least. Worst of all, the missions couldn't be more repetitive. Missions involve fairly routine and unimaginative activities such as pick up this, drop it off here, burn this, tag that, capture and defend this point, and raid this warehouse, among other things. If you care to see what raiding a warehouse is like, well, get ready. It's exciting! Hold on. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah that was it. These mundane tasks permeate nearly every mission in the game. With all the hype that surrounded APB, we had really high hopes for the game, but the subpar gameplay seriously hurt its appeal. Oh God! While MMOs always have room to improve themselves, APB for now gets two shootouts. I don't worry about what criminals are writing on walls, Dick. Out of five. Stick around, we've got more mullets on the way, including game that gave us the biggest headache. You're giving me a headache. Shut up or I'll bleed you. Plus, a fighting game that'll make you never want to use Connect. We'll be right back. When you've got a new platform, or in the case of Kinect, a peripheral that adds motion controls to the Xbox 360, there's no escaping the shovelware. Every company rushes out to make a game as fast as they can to meet that launch date. Pain don't hurt, but Fighters Uncaged sure does. This tastes like my dad's kisses. Fighters Uncaged for Kinect is a really good game and totally worth your time. That's what we might be saying right now if this game weren't terrible. 
Watch out for my fist! Literally everything about Fighters Uncaged is awful. In theory, you use your whole body to control your character, but as you'd imagine, the scheme is laggy and broken. You know that your game doesn't work well when our intern here can beat it by pawing at the air like a kitten. You can chain your attacks to create combos, but half the time, your moves don't register anyway. Too bad! This experience will actually make you think fondly back to a time when you had buttons. We did get some enjoyment making fun of the voice acting. Your character speaks to himself in very calm, measured observations while fighting. I could have dodged that strike. Very interesting. I should sweep him when he misses a round kick. Hey, oh! I wish I were that calm when I was in a no-holds-barred fight. The rogues gallery mostly consists of guys who are dressed like different era Freddie Mercury's. Rat face! Ooh, rat face. Now that's an intimidating name. You know what? You don't scare me! At least it's not as bad as Jawbreaker. Know how I got my street name? I'm about to show ya! No thanks. I guess this game does teach valuable lessons. Remember, kids, when you're in a serious fight, there are no timeouts. Timeout! Oh, wait, never mind. So you're probably waiting for the part of the review where we talk about multiplayer, right? Well, guess what? This game doesn't even have that. It seems like Fighters Uncaged would essentially be based around playing with your friends, but maybe it's for the best, considering how loose your motions are when you play. You think this is bad? The worst is yet to come. Fighters Uncaged gets a one. <laughs> I knew it! Out of five. Our last mullet of the evening is a special one. Game that gave us the biggest headache. Metroid Other M isn't the worst thing released this year. It's, it's not Aquaman bad. It's just misguided. The controls are clunky and it betrays the legacy of one of our favorite characters. Metroid Other M seemed to hold promise when it was first announced. But now it has arrived, and holy crap, it sucks for so many reasons. Hang on tight, Metroid fans, this is gonna hurt. The story is a far bigger part of the game than in any previous Metroids, and it's a big part of the problem. The conspiracy side of the tale is just fine, but mostly it's concerned with Samus and her vast, sweeping insecurities related to her past. Samus's characterization in Other M is absolutely unacceptable and frankly insulting to her fans in general and female fans specifically. This woman has saved the galaxy half a dozen times over and she's standing around moping over this Adam guy in long droning monologues that sound less like the most badass bounty hunter in known space and more like a 12 year old girl reading her journal. Confession time. So come around with your love. Until you consider what it will cost to pull me the F you. This is one of the strongest and non-sexualized female characters in gaming, and now she's constantly showing us her ass and mooning over this utterly personality-free Adam guy. She's so submissive to him that the reason you don't have your power-ups in the beginning is not because she doesn't have her power-up abilities, but because she decides not to use them until Adam says it's okay. Sam, I'm authorizing missile you. Dude, you couldn't even open the front door without Samus's help. The third-person action is a blend of Ninja Gaiden and Metroid and works pretty well aside from the inconsistent auto-aim that's forced on you. First-person view is the only way to shoot missiles and scan things and you're stuck standing still during this. The problem is that you control third-person with the Wiimote held sideways and first-person by rotating the Wiimote and pointing it at the screen. So there's always a moment of, wait, where's my reticle every time you switch to first-person? Boss battles basically consist of finding enough time to switch to first person and fire off a missile without being creamed. But hey, if you run low on health or missiles, you no longer have to kill enemies to replenish them. You just hold the A button and concentrate, and your health and missiles refill. Yes, Samus gets more missiles by thinking about it really hard. It's stupid. Metroid Other M is a giant pulsing morass of bad decisions. Two massive thumbs down out of five. Remember, kids, be nice, 
until it's time to not be nice. Thanks for watching X-Play.